Okay, impact. Let's think impact. If a person's watching this content, most of the people that are watching this, a portion is going to be those that are haters, that just want to find like, poke at the argument to find, you see, I told you, see, I told you, fine. But a lot of people that are also watching this, they're probably wanting to make impact. They want their life to have meaning behind it. That's who's watching this show today, yeah. right? Okay, so I can't be a president, but I want to make impact. I being anybody that's watching this. Because Putin says eight years, another, another guy comes, or the guy with the briefcase shows up, okay, cool. Well, if you were in the States, and you're saying president wouldn't be how to make an impact, but let's say there is a kid who's 20 years old, 18 years old, 25 years old, has so much drive, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Ambition at the highest level. Who do you think has the biggest influence to make positive change, like real change? Is it the person with the money? Is it the person with the biggest mic? Is it the person that goes into politics? What is the best way to have the biggest impact? Yeah, so I think the world has always only ever been a battle for influence. Even if you look at the current battlefield, Ukraine is next door, it's five hours drive away. The battle in Ukraine is not just about tanks and trenches and grenades. It's a battle for influence. Who influences the people within this territory? Who is in charge of the thinking, the language, the mindset of people within this geographical area? Every single battle, every single pitched battle, every single argument, every single debate has always been a battle for influence. If you have influence, you're an extremely powerful pe person. All of us here are some of the most powerful people in the world. How many millions of people listen to us? We have massive influence. And I think you can have influence at the ground level. You don't have to be a famous podcaster or famously well-known to have influence. I would argue that those Romanian grandmas who gave me my food will remember me for the rest of their lives. I would like to believe I gave a positive influence and a positive impact on their lives for the rest of their life. I believe if you go through life and you're genuinely a good person, you try your best to be good to people and you're honest and you shake hands and you don't lie and you're on time and you work hard and you're good to everyone who's good to you, I think you'll have a massive influence. And I also believe, I truly believe that God is extremely giving. There's the saying, goes around, comes around, completely true. But I would say it comes from God. God is keeping an eye on you and he's paying attention to you and he knows the kind of person you are and the kind of things you do. And I don't believe if you're actually genuinely a good person all of the time, that you're not gonna get some good will back to you. Look at my scenario. If I was being a piece of shit for years with all these chicks, I'd be in jail. I'd be in jail. I could have never seen this coming. But the fact that I was nice, paid their taxi home, bought them food, looked after them, are you okay? I know we broke up, I'm sorry, I know it hurts, I just did it, I was nice about all of it, here I am, I'm fine. And so I could have never seen this matrix attack coming. It's amazing how what goes around comes around. It's truly amazing. If you're good to people, if you're generous to people, if you're helpful to people, you'd be amazed how much influence you can build up. I say this to people all the time. I don't think if you're a hardworking person who is honest, who shakes hands, who tries to learn, who does what they're supposed to do, who has a good heart, that you're truly really not gonna be able to get what you want. I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. When I see somebody who says they want something and they don't have it, I don't even think they truly even want it. You can have anything you want in the world. When a guy goes, I want a six pack, then why ain't you got one? If you wanted it, you'd have it. You'd like it, there's a bunch of things I'd like that I don't have but I don't want them. Everything I've ever wanted, I've got. I've never wanted something and not had it. We all know what we're talking about here. There's things we'd like. I'd like to be able to figure skate. Not enough to go learn to figure skate. It's but, a weird look if you figure out, although that other guy <laughs> dancing like the way you dance is doing a pretty the good bottom job. G. Bottom G, <laughs> yeah. you've seen this guy? He can figure skate. <laughs> that but guy I, kills the dance moves. Yeah, he's good. Way. But you're doppelganger. But if you truly want something, you're going to yeah. absolutely not have it. So when it comes down to influence, I think you start at the, at the base level, at the grassroots level. What if, I, what if this guy's got, like, you know, for example, like, you know how um, when you were 20, yeah. were you this driven? Oh, absolutely. I okay, just, so when you're 20, who did you look at and say, I can do it as good as him, if not better. My coach, because I wanted to fight, and he used to kick, he used to beat me badly. Everyone used to beat me up when I was young, and I wanted to be the best, so I used to go into the fight gym. Okay, how about communication? Who'd you look at? Were you always a good communicator? I can see you being a great communicator since you were 14 years old. My, my pretty. Sp I was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, who did you look at and say, "I guy's good," but I think I can, you know, do it better. That's a good question, and I think that. You know what I'm asking. I right? know what you're asking. I, I don't know if there's one particular person I took nuances from because when you're a great communicator, you know how to be serious and you know how to make people sad and angry and you also know how to people make people laugh. There's different people who can do lots of different things. So who things. was that? Was that somebody that was multifaceted like that? I, I think it was a lot of different people. And I also think that- Did you pull from comedy as well or no? I certainly did, but I was also extremely self-critical. 
I think that's where a lot of it came, comes from. I'll watch, I'll watch this podcast back 15 times. I will notice every single time I made a mistake. Just then I said, I'll watch twice. That was a mistake. I will watch this back 15 times and I'll identify every single error. I have uh, an email list and I sign up and I get words of the day. I get five or six new words a day, which I try my very best to memorize. It's harder than you think to memorize five words a day, but I always try to make sure I have the most interesting vernacular I can possibly have, a wide vocabulary is gonna be very specific with my points. The reason I actually did that, my, my, I keep talking about my dad, but he, he taught, he, I'm his son. I have the same name, Emory Andrew Tate III. He was Emory Andrew Tate II. My father was a linguist for the CIA. He spoke Russian and German and Spanish and English. And uh, I think I've told this before, back then when they needed someone who spoke Russian, they would take a Native American and teach them Russian. Nowadays, we have a bunch of Russian-speaking allies. You can go to Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. They're all NATO and just get a Russian speaker. Back then, they taught my dad Russian, and he held the Air Force record for the fastest assimilation of a foreign language. When he died, a guy sent me an email, sent me a message saying, you don't know who I am, but I worked with your father in the Air Force, and he had the fastest assimilation. He learned Russian in two weeks. Crazy. And I remember saying to my dad, will you teach me Russian? He said, boy, you don't even know English. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you don't even know English. And, at the t and, and once he sat me down with a dictionary, I was like, you're right. I don't even know English. That's why even, I've lived in Romania seven years. People say, why don't you speak Romanian? Because I don't know English yet. I need to finish the first job before I learn the second. I don't know English. There's a bunch of words I don't know. I can't speak how he spoke. So I don't have time for a second language. Yeah. Also, another thing I found really interesting, Putin speaks English. Have you ever heard him speak English? No. Because if you want to speak to Putin, you speak to him in his language. You speak to me in Russian, and I reply to you in Russian to you. I cannot be misunderstood or misconstrued. I don't make a fool of myself. You can't get me on some vernacular trick. I speak my language, and I also prefer that also. I speak English. That's what I speak. If you want to speak to me, you speak to me in my language, so I will win the debate always. Who do you look up to outside of your dad? I look up to lots of people. I'm talking specifically younger age, not today. I'm talking 16, 20, 25, that, that age. Not today. It's a good question. Because I always believed in trying to take the best parts of individual people and then amalgamate them. And I know you want a name and I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I would look at people who I didn't even respect, but they'd have one particular thing about them. I thought that's good. It could be somebody I didn't even like, but he dressed well. I think you just have to be perspicacious and look at people and there's something you can learn from absolutely everybody and just try and adapt it all. I'm not saying everybody should be clones of me for everyone's individual, right? But there might be some things about me they find inspiring that they may adapt and take on board and then they'll find some things from other people. But learning to speak is something I very well, I understood from a very young age how important that would be. That's a superpower. Okay, so let me go back to the question I was asking where I'm trying to go with this. So I asked the question, I said, imagine the 20 year old that's watching this, yep. that's saying, notate, don't give me the answer for, I can, anybody can create, you know, yeah. can contribute to society. I'm not that guy. Talk to me like I'm one in a million. Talk okay. to me like I'm one cool. in a million. So if I'm willing to give. Yeah. 20 years, 30 years of my life to yep. one way to go up to make true positive impact yep. in America, my country, yep. in the world. Yep. What, what should, don't talk to me like everybody else. Okay. The standards, what should I do? What Absolutely. angle should I do? Okay, so first things first, you need to be worthy of respect. And you're gonna be worthy of respect through having things which are difficult to acquire. So first things first, the basic things, you need to be very focused on trying to make money because people listen to you when you have money. They just do. Secondly, you need to be in fantastic physical condition because when you're in fantastic physical condition, it cannot be bought. It must be earned, and people know that. When you're in, I, mean, I don't know about you, if someone walked in to sell me something and they were obese, I would not trust them the same as if they were in fantastic physical shape. Because I'd say, I don't think you have dedication and heart. I don't think, there's something about you that I just wouldn't trust you the same. So fantastic physical condition and money is, is the first thing. The second thing, whatever your ideas are, you need to learn how to communicate them. Speaking is a superpower in and of itself. You need to become a fantastic communicator. You need to be comfortable in all realms of communication. You need to be persuasive. You need to be comfortable arguing. You need to be good at debating. There's a lot of people out there in the world who have ideas that they can't even project into somebody else's mind. How are you gonna, how are you gonna rule the world with that? How are you gonna get your ideas out there and make an influence if you can't make other people understand exactly what you think? That's the first thing. Second thing, once they understand exactly what you think, you need to make them agree with what you think. These are two different skills. Must be practiced and must be learned. If you're 20 years old and you want to change the world, you need to be having endless debates, endless, without resorting to name calling, not on Twitter like a dummy, in person. And you need to come across in a way that people agree with you. We can go back quickly and talk about the red pill. The difference between me when I talk to girls on these panel shows and every other guy when they talk to girls on these panel shows is, when I'm done, all the girls want me. Watch them. 
Watch the shows. I say the same thing and by the end the chicks are in love with me as opposed to saying the same thing and the chicks thinking I'm a dickhead. That's the difference. I project my ideas and I make them agree with my ideas to a point where they're like, texting me afterwards. I'm not saying anything different. It's how I'm communicating it. Some, so you can catch more flies with honey than, than hurting people sometimes. So you need to be good at everything. You need to have a Swiss army knife of tools. I know when to be intimidating or aggressive. I know when to come across as obtuse. I know when to come across as exceptionally open-minded and easy to understand. I know when to come across as understanding. I know all these things. This all has to be practiced. And a lot of it is, yeah, communication. I would say, if you're gonna to say to a 20-year-old who's truly exceptional and driven, I'd say you need to become a master communicator. Because once you can do that, you can do anything. And that fixes all the other problems, right? We talk about making money. If you're a master communicator, you do fantastic yeah. in sales, yeah. you'll kill sales. Yep. You'll absolutely destroy sales if you're a master communicator. Not many people know this, but I used to sell windows. You know the old school knock on the door? Window sales. I did window sales for two or three years, and I'd say this is one of the hardest jobs you could possibly do. And I would always recommend a young man if he has some time to waste to go sell windows. <laughs> and the reason, it's fantastic, because I'll tell you why. It's the hardest one to sell because one, nobody wants them. Two, they don't know who you are. And three, even if you convince them that they need windows after them not knowing who you are, then they go to all your competitors and then it becomes a price war. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's the hardest sales job. If you're selling a Lambo, at least they want the Lambo, right? Nobody wants glass and plastic. They already have windows. So you gotta find a way to sell them these windows. How do you do that? And that's where all this master communication comes in. And it's so many subtle little things. Being a good salesman is not necessarily being a liar. It's not being a trickster. It's just understanding what's gonna make the person believe and understand what you say. If I walked in and said, would you like new windows? And they essentially said, no, we don't need new windows. Our windows look fine. I would say, but what about the security aspect while looking at their three-year-old child? And they'd sit there and go, ah, oh, what do you mean security aspect? And then I talk about how we had the lock 5,000 and their locks are easy to break as if glass isn't glass, it's all the same anyway. And you'd end up selling the windows. You have to find the triggers in people. There's another thing people don't understand about me and my message. Sometimes I sit here and I say things that piss people off because that's how you trigger people to make action. I have often written emails or done videos, to, especially to men when I want to help men, to piss them off. You're a loser. You're a dumbass. Andrew, why do you mean? Because you're not gonna to go to the gym unless I tell you you're a fucking loser. And you are a loser, and I'm not lying to you. You are a loser. The emotional trigger you need to get up off that chair is the fact that you're not important, nobody cares who you are, any girl you're ever in love with I could take, and you're insignificant. And when you die, nobody's interested. That's your fault. You could have been something else. You did that. You failed. It has to be done. You have to be a master communicator. And sometimes that involves also insulting people. It's all a, a massive tapestry, but to answer your question, for the 20-year-old, he needs to become a master at communicating. But also to be a master at communicating, to be a master at communicating, you also, you also need experiences worth talking about. You have to live a life. You need a degree of wisdom, and wisdom doesn't always come with age, it comes with life lived. I had a guy message me, this is a long time ago when I used to reply to my own emails, too big now, but he said, I don't have any stories, my life's boring. I said, bro, where do you live? He said, Madrid. I said, bro, ride the train from Madrid to St. Petersburg. Ride the Ma train from Madrid to Vladivostok. Do the Trans-Siberian Railway. Cost you like 300 bucks. He goes, oh, but what if I get robbed? Exactly! That's exactly <laughs> the point! What if you get robbed? Now you have a story. Maybe you'll die, maybe you won't. But you have a story. Don't bring your watch. Have you got a Rolex? No. No one wants to rob you anyway. Don't worry about it. You're brokey. Get on the train. There has to be that degree of risk to even have a story. Because when you have a story, then you can communicate the story. A lot, you can't be an empty vessel either. So when you say to the, uh, you're telling me how I build this 20 year old into a super soldier. Yeah, he has to be a master communicator, but he also has to do things which are risky. Risk has value intrinsically linked to it, intrinsically. This is why people, when you do risky things, people want to hear the story. Your coolest stories involve risk. Something went wrong. This could have happened. I almost this. I made it out. Without these risks, you haven't got it. So I would say to the 20 year old, do what I did. Get in the cage. Get in the ring. Knock someone out, get knocked out, train hard. Fighting will teach you everything you need to know about life. You'll learn everything about who you truly are. You'll learn if you're a coward or not. You'll learn everything about perseverance and hard work and dedication. Everything about being underappreciated. You'll learn everything about fear. you learn all of it. you learn everything about people. You win a fight, check your phone. Lose a fight, check your phone. you learn all about people. <laughs> you learn all about them. you learn all about women. I learned so much about women through fighting. When I had a fight coming up and I was, I was weight drained and I had barely eaten in, in weeks and I'd lost all this weight 
and I had a, a world title fight and I'm fighting a guy who might kill me and she's complaining about the toilet seat. I learn all about women. You learn a lot about life through these, through these difficult pr processes and paths. And there used to be for men like a rite of passage. In most societies, you had to go through something to become a man, from a boy to a man. But that thing was always difficult. It's always been difficult. Now you have to self-induce it, self-inflict it. But if you're going to be a boy and never, never bring on that self-inflicted rite of passage, how are you going to ever become a man? It's great feedback. Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.